Folks, you want a tailored governance system. Too many people try to have a stock rubber stamp governance system for their enterprise. Remember, I have 40 governance and management objectives. You do not have to completely blow away every one of them. You only have to be real good at the ones that are most important to you. And you may only have to be halfway good at the ones that are not quite as important. And here's how you do it. All right, so you get this question a lot. Hey, I'm facing this huge challenge. I need to create a tailored governance system. Can COBIT help me with this? And what this can also do for the question I just received a second ago is it can also help you explain to your executives. And believe me, I've been in this seat. If you can explain to me how it's actually going to help me achieve my objectives, you now have my attention. We'll see why here in a second. So we have these series of what are called design factors. Okay. I know we've covered so much stuff, guys. Hang in there. These design factors are different for every company. If I'm a bicycle manufacturer, they're different than they are an international bank. They're different than they are for a North American aerospace manufacturer. They're different than they are for an antique bookseller. So these design factors, one, we've got what's called enterprise strategy. My organization was very clear. My board of directors said, grow, 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 grow. Digitally transform. We want to be better than everybody else, and we want to double in size in 18 months. That was their strategy. Based on that strategy, do you think some of those governance or management objectives may be more important than others? Absolutely. Enterprise goals. We have 13 enterprise goals. They're generic COVID goals. But if you map your specific company goals into these 13 goals that, that COVID has, and if you can tell me how important those goals are, I'll be able to tell you which of those governance or management objectives are the ones you need to focus on. Therefore, if it's a governance or management objective that's important, there's a process underlying it that I need to focus on. Risk profile, think about it. There's a different risk profile for a bicycle manufacturer then there would be an international bank that does high value clients different risks altogether int related issues these are what we used to call pain points it doesn't take a whole lot of digging to find pain points you can ask most people in the enterprise, including IT, here's a list. There's a standard list that I'm going to show you that has a lot to do with how you might tailor your governance system. The threat landscape kind of goes back to the risk profile a little bit. that says, hey, do we have something someone wants? And what's the degree at which that landscape looks? Compliance requirements. Are we in a pretty normal compliance requirements arena? Or do we consider ourselves in an unusually high compliance requirements area? I run, with the, I run into this with banks all the time. Banks say, well, we have high compliance requirements. And I'm like, how is your compliance requirement or how are your compliance requirements any different than any other bank in this industry? So I would consider it normal. What about your bank makes you high? So you have to put that in the context of the industry that you're looking at. Role of IT, is IT considered a, uh, an expense or a necessity, or is IT considered a strategic enabler? It's going to have a little bit to do with my governance or management objectives that I pick. How do I source? Do I outsource? Do I insource? IT implementation methods, are we a waterfall organization? Are we doing agile? Um, or are we into the, uh, DevOps, or do we do a little bit of all three? That's going to have a lot to do with things like BAI, which is how we approve and deploy things. Technology adoption. Do I buy things before anybody else, or do I wait until it's been uh, out on the market for a while? Of course, enterprise size has a little bit to do with it. Not as significant for the, for the folks that we're talking to out here, but that does have a little bit of play in this. And again, any future factors that you might have. So the idea is this. I'm going to show you, I'm going to do a demo for you of this tool. I can't provide you this tool, guys. You got to go out and get it yourselves out on the site. That's that tool that I showed you that you can find under the design guide. 
It's a free one for ISACA members. Okay, so those are my design factors. So let's take a look at this design workflow. Now, I've told you I'm your CIO or I'm your governing body. And I say, hey, I want you to help me develop a, a tailored governance system that's unique to our organization. So basically, you've got four steps you're going to go through, okay? Step number one, I want you to understand a little bit about our organization, right? I'm going to give you what you need to know about our strategy. I'm going to give you any strategy documentation, any of our executive level briefings that might help you understand our strategy. And then I'm going to give you my goals. Here are the goals of the enterprise. These are the goals that we published to our, 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 our shareholders in the last annual report. Understand the risk profile. You can find out information from enterprise risk, from our security side of the house, as well as maybe our continuity side. Here's what we believe the most influential or most threatening risk scenarios are. And here's what we believe the IT issues are. So you're collecting information there. Next, what you're going to do is go into this tool we'll show you in a second. And you're going to actually do a little bit of uh, analysis and assessment on that. You'll refine the governance system. Now we take the rest. So you might have noticed that these two lists right here, those are my first four design factors. These are the remainder of those design factors, which was that previous slide we saw a few minutes ago. And then you're going to conclude the governance design system. And again, this is going to change based on your organization's needs and these design factors. Let's go ahead and take a look next. We'll do this course scenario, a real short scenario, and I'll show you what I would come up with if I were in the shoes of this specific bank that we're talking about here.